When India gained independence in 1947, it inherited a shattered economy with no worthwhile infrastructure for science and technology, no sound industrial base, abysmally low agricultural production and poor health services. Famines were chronic. Imported food grains fed the people. The country led a ship-to-mouth existence. India gained independence in 1947. It was a very uh, nascent country with hardly any development. Economy was in shambles. There was no industry. And the founder fathers felt that it was very important to not only develop science, but also inculcate scientific temper in the people. But a young India struggling to find its foothold in the Committee of Nations was fortunate to have visionary founding fathers and nation builders who laid down a roadmap for the country's progress riding on science and technology. Research laboratories were set up, agricultural output was boosted, industrial base was strengthened, health infrastructure was firmed up. A fledgling democracy soon dusted off its forlorn past and set off to chart for itself a bold course that would one day position it as one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Very early on, our founding fathers also realized a key element, that the rapid pace of scientific development and explosion of scientific information could create division among those who know science and those who find it difficult to comprehend the complexities of science. Therefore, they laid great stress on communication of scientific information to bridge these gaps and to inculcate scientific temper among the country's citizens. It is this foresight and vision that led to the establishment of an organization more than 60 years ago. The New Delhi-based National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Resources. A constituent laboratory of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and spread out in two campuses, NISCARE has a long tradition of disseminating scientific information and spreading scientific literacy. It is an institute that has always strived to keep the flag of scientific temper flying high. The idea of a knowledge institute to preserve a resource such as knowledge actually can be traced back nearly 3,000 years to Solomon, who first identified knowledge as a valuable resource in itself. In fact, there's a quote from Proverbs which says that knowledge is more valuable than gold and wisdom more valuable than a bag of rubies. And that has now been recognized as central to modern economies. And it is in that, with that mandate that NISCARE continues to grow. Today, NISCARE has carved out a niche for itself by becoming the largest institute in the country engaged in dissemination of scientific information. It serves India's scientific community through its 17 peer-reviewed research journals and scientific services. It reaches out to masses, especially students, through its three widely circulated popular science magazines and a large number of popular science books and is aiding farmers and industrialists through its encyclopedic publications that document India's raw material resources. More recently, with its foray into informatics and infometrics and multimedia, the Institute has added a totally new dimension to its activities. Science communication has mainly two components. One, the scientific knowledge and the other is scientific attitude. I think a combination of both of them holds the key for the overall development. How organizations like CSIR NISCARE, that is National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources, can help 
bring both of them together for the common cause of making people aware of science and technology as well as inculcating the scientific temperament among us them. So these are the two objectives of science and technology communication that NISCARE is looking forward. NISCARE was set up in 1951 with an objective for science communication taking up cause of publications. Subsequently, various other facets were added to it, ranging from information technology to science communication through multimedia. Subsequently, we are also looking for creation of a media center for having a linkage with science and society and society and science both together. 70 years back, when the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research was set up, in 1942, among its major objectives was the collection and dissemination of information and publication of scientific papers and journals, born out of an acknowledgement of the integral role of science and communication in research and development. Initially, CSIR fulfilled these responsibilities through two units, the Dictionary of Indian Raw Materials and Economic Products and the Journal of scientific and industrial research. In 1951, these two offices were merged into the Publications and Information Directorate, or PID. The new entity had its work cut out for itself. It was supposed to cater to the country's requirement of scientific information through publication of research periodicals, monographs and proceedings, and also updating the Dictionary of Indian Raw Materials and economic products in the form of Wealth of India. Sometime later, with the introduction of popular science magazines, the Institute added a new dimension to its activities, dissemination of scientific information to the masses and inculcation of scientific temper among the country's citizens. At almost the same time, the Government of India initiated a move in 1950 to set up a National Scientific Documentation Centre, which was approved by UNESCO. The Indian government gave CSIR the responsibility of establishing the Indian National Scientific Documentation Centre, which was eventually created and located in the National Physical Laboratory under the direct supervision of Dr. K.S. Krishnan, the then director of NPL. Conceived as national in scope, soon, Instock was providing services to several countries in the Asian region, apart from a plethora of documentation services for research and industry in the country. So in 1963, CSIR raised the status of Instock from its subsidiary position in NPL to that of an independent institute. Meanwhile, PID's science communication activities also continued to grow and gain in importance. Consequently, in 1996, PID was upgraded to the National Institute of Science Communication, NISCOM. Both NISCOM and INSTOP complemented each other's work perfectly. It was a union waiting to happen. Eventually, in 2002, NISCOM and INSTOP merged their strengths to give birth to a new entity the National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources. Combining the rich legacy of NISCOM and INSTOC, NISCARE has today merged as an institution of international standard and repute in areas of scientific information dissemination, science popularization and s and information management systems and services. NISCARE is today well known the world over for its bouquet of 17 scholarly research journals in various disciplines of science and technology ranging from physics to radiophysics, chemistry to chemical technology, experimental biology to biotechnology and intellectual property rights to traditional knowledge. To meet the nation's demand of upcoming specialized and specific subject areas, four new journals, the Indian Journal of Chemistry, the Indian Journal of Technology, Indian Journal of Pure and Applied Physics, and Indian Journal 
of experimental biology were started in 1963. The very next year, 1964, started the Indian Journal of Biochemistry, which was later renamed as the Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics in 1971. More recently, in keeping with the country's global aspirations and the increasing complexities surrounding the issue, the Journal of Intellectual Property Rights was started. The rapid advancements in the field of biotechnology were served by initiating the Indian Journal of Biotechnology. The increasing efforts to protect and harvest the country's rich traditional knowledge was reflected in the publication of the Indian Journal of Traditional Knowledge and the national effort at inculcating scientific temper in the country's citizens was visible in the launch of the Journal of Scientific Temper. Over the years, CSIR Niskar journals have displayed an expanding footprint. In the year 2012, two of the Niskar journals, the Indian Journal of Experimental Biology and the Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics crossed an impact factor of one, a rarity for Indian journals. In the same year, the impact factor of all the Niskayar journals grew by about 41% over the previous year. CSIR Niskayar also operates the consortium activity. And through this activity, the CSIR Niskayar facilitates access to over 5,000 international periodicals and several international databases across all CSIR labs. Apart from catering to research and scientific community, NISCA also has a strong program of taking scientific information to the masses in a language they can understand. The popular science magazines are the most recognizable faces of NISCA. We bring out three popular science magazines. Vigyan Pragati, a Hindi monthly, launched in 1952. Science Reporter and English Monthly launched in 1964 and Science Ki Dunya and Urdu Quarterly launched in 1975. Besides these popular science magazines, we also publish two R&D newsletters, CSIR News and CSIR Samachar. Science Reporter Vigyan Pagati and Science Ki Dunya being brought out by CSIR Niskare have today become the largest selling popular science magazines in the country. They are read by a wide readership throughout the country. but uh, Majorly, they enjoy a very de uh, dedicated uh, readership among students, uh, mainly because uh, they get in these magazines latest updates on the world of science. Many children also use these magazines to prepare for their competitive exams. Uh, but most of all, these magazines provide a wonderful opportunity for young and budding science writers to showcase their writing talent. So these magazines are providing a very uh, important role for the country by disseminating scientific information inculcating scientific temper, and also attracting students towards science. NISCA also pursues its science popularization mandate by bringing out popular science books. It has brought out a large number of well-illustrated and moderately priced popular science books on topics ranging from cells and machines to computers and artificial intelligence, from atom and materials to space technology and stars. Even today, Many years after their publication, the books continue to be avidly consumed by readers. 1992 was the Golden Jubilee year of CSIR. And that was the beginning of the Golden Jubilee series that PID later brought out on subjects on which such books are not available in the market. So we decided that we'll ask senior scientists who are actually working scientists to write books on their subjects. We asked the senior scientists from around the country, from many CSR labs and other organizations, including TIFR, BRC and all, to write the manuscript on a certain topic. So it was a unique experience. In fact, we brought out about 40 titles and they were, you know, they, they sold like hotcakes. There are other series of publications too that have rolled out from the portals of Nesca. The Sci Fun series was aimed at school-going children and dealt with topics like rain, desert and strange plants. The Q series answered common yet perplexing science questions. The Vistas in Biotechnology series and the Foundations in Biotechnology series focused on advances and efforts by scientists to harness 
Gene Power. The IT for All series covered everything from getting a hang of the personal computer to designing your own website. Another publication that has left its mark is the Golden Treasury of Science and Technology, an encyclopedia that is a veritable treasury of information highlighting Indian contributions, providing biographical details of eminent scientists and touching the frontier areas of research, all presented in an easily understandable language. Yet another encyclopedic publication that has been the pride of Nescare is The Wealth of India. It is a ready reckoner for researchers, entrepreneurs, plant-based industrialists and policy makers. Nescare also brings out the Hindi version of Wealth of India called Bharat Ki Sampada. While compiling the wealth of India and establishing the correct identity of plants and plant and animal products, Nescare built up a sizable collection of specimens, herbarium sheets, photographs and illustrations. Today this collection is housed in the Raw Materials Herbarium and Museum which has over 8,000 specimen of economic and medicinal plants of India and over 3,000 samples of crude drugs, animal and mineral specimens. Neske also houses the National Science Library which is among the biggest and the oldest science libraries in the country. Established in 1963 and spread over four flows, it is a treasure house of knowledge holding over 2,50,000 documents on science and technology as well as national and international databases. Among other services offered at Niske is the Medicinal and Aromatic Plants Information Service which is being extensively used by researchers, entrepreneurs, industries, agriculturists and government agencies. Over the years, Niske has also built up state-of-the-art facilities for handling all aspects of editing, production and design of scientific publications. The Institute has modern printing machines to undertake printing of both in-house as well as jobs from other institutions and agencies. Recently, Niske has also created an ultra-modern digital information resource facility. In keeping with changing paradigms, Niske has evolved over the years. It has stepped into new avenues and charted new terrain. With climate change becoming a cause for concern the world over, yet another initiative that CSIR Niscare has taken is Climate Change Informatics that seeks to keep an eagle eye on data pertaining to climate change with special emphasis on Indian conditions. Access to patent information can play an enabling role with the progress of the country. Keeping this in view, Niske has launched the Patent Informatics Initiative that would generate databases at a low cost in thrust areas of relevance to the country to enable researchers find research gaps. Niske's recent forays into the world of multimedia and cyberspace are also significant. Niske has always been conscious of its role as a purveyor of scientific information and an agent of change. Posters conveying the message of scientific temper have been designed to be distributed throughout the country. A journal of scientific temper to develop and collate research in this area has also been launched. Niske is also a center uh, for research, undertaking PhDs in the area of science communication under the edges of uh, Academy of Scientific and Inno Innovative Research. Niske has made its mark at the national as well as the international arena with its high quality scientific publications. But it is not content to rest on its laurels. In keeping with changing trends and demands of the times, Nescare has evolved to take up new challenges. With 60 years of service to the nation behind it, Nescare 
will continue to inform, enrich, innovate and catalyze change for the better, much into the future.